Did anyone actually play Cuphead or did art style overshadow gameplay? Let's find out. Welcome everyone, I am Oldbit and this is Did Anyone Play, a series where we investigate, analyze, and determine the truth about how much gamers have truly played and completed video games. How do we do this? We use trophy and achievement milestones within games and then compare those results to our huge gaming database to evaluate and rank games compared to the rest of the industry. Using objective data and statistical comparisons, we can draw conclusions. We aren't reviewing games in a traditional sense. Our goal is to provide analysis that can be better used to understand player behavior while ignoring game sales and hype to ensure we see reality as it truly is. Remember that all percentages we'll be talking about here come from the total number of players that have launched and played the game for any period of time, so these results are a full reflection on how gamers actually played Cuphead. First, it's game time. Let's play Better or Worse, where I give you three games and you have to guess if Cuphead did better or worse for player completion compared to the, each of these games. I'll give the answers out a little bit later in the video. So you can see the games Cuphead is up against. We have Halo Infinite, Dead Cells, and Blasphemous 2. So place your bets and good luck to you. As always, please hit that like button, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want more of these types of videos. And a quick spoiler warning as we may be talking about some elements of late game progression. So let's find out if anyone actually played Cuphead on Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation. The first milestone that players will likely reach is called Taking Names. This milestone is achieved once a player defeats their first boss in the game on Inkwell Isle 1. So how many players made it to this first early milestone? On Steam, 77.4% of players hit this milestone. PlayStation had 87.1% and Xbox had 66.5% of players do this. So this is a bit of a mixed bag to start off. PlayStation only losing 12% is a fairly strong start, but Cuphead loses 33% of their players on Xbox before a single boss is beaten. Let's go to the graph. Here you can see visually that Cuphead is performing above the industry average for PlayStation and Steam, but Xbox is performing under the industry average and is struggling right out of the gate. It may be a Game Pass effect and we will have to watch this as we go along. So what kind of game is Cuphead? It's a single and multiplayer shoot 'em up where the player fights through a succession of boss fights with some run and gun style levels in between. The story revolves around Cuphead and his brother Mugman as they make a deal with the devil to pay their casino losses by repossessing the souls of runaway debtors. The game's art channels the golden age of animation as the core style, and bosses have multiple phases to survive. Cuphead is not an easy game and leans far more towards hard on the difficulty slider. The main story can take around 15 hours to complete and it was developed and published by Studio MDHR. Cuphead released on Xbox and Steam in September of 2017 and on PlayStation three years later in July of 2020. The second milestone we've chosen is called a walk in the park. This is awarded after a player defeats every boss in Inkwell Island 1. This requires five bosses to be beaten. How many players made it here? Steam has 53.9% of players achieving this, PlayStation has 61.3%, and Xbox has 44.1%. Cuphead has another big drop for Milestone 2, but this time it's nearly identical across all platforms. Steam and PlayStation are just barely above the average now, and Xbox has dropped a bit more below the average than before. The trend right now is that Cuphead is losing a decent amount of players as they progress through the first aisle. More than half of Xbox players are gone, just under half on Steam, and around 40% gone for PlayStation. Let's see how this progresses. It's always good to understand the competition a game was up against when it was launched. What was happening around September 29th, 2017 in the gaming world? We see titles like Forza Motorsport 7, FIFA 18, and Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen came out around this time on the platforms. Looking at Google Trends here, we see that Cuphead in Blue was doing decent against everything but FIFA. FIFA was dominating at this time. So it's clear that the hype was a bit low for Cuphead and the competition was mixed. We like to pick a mid-game marker for our third milestone. Here we have chosen a day at the fair. Players can achieve this by defeating every boss on Inkwell Isle 2. This requires another five bosses to be defeated. How many players reached this milestone? Steam has 30.8% of players do this, PlayStation had 34.5% and Xbox has 23%. So more losses across the board for Cuphead that are above 20%. And now only PlayStation remains above the industry average for Cuphead. Steam is dipped below and Xbox is 10% below the average. How did Cuphead do with critics? Metacritic for Xbox rates it at 86 out of 100, and PlayStation also had an 86. On Steam, users have rated it very positive recently and overwhelmingly positive all time, with over 148,000 reviews. 
open critic rating is an 88, with 91% of critics recommending it. The critical reception for Cuphead was definitely strong. The most important milestone is our fourth one, and what we base our industry ranking on. It definitely shows how many players finished the game and truly played Cuphead. This milestone is called Souls Saved, and is awarded when a player completes the game on normal difficulty. There are 19 total bosses in the game a player will need to defeat on normal difficulty to get to this milestone. Where does Cuphead end up on the different platforms? On Steam, 16.3% of players completed this milestone. For PlayStation, it was 16%, and on Xbox, it was 9.9% that finished it. This actually represents one of the smallest drops for Cuphead across all platforms. But the end result is that all platforms are now below the industry average. PlayStation had the largest drop here, and Steam at the very end of the game finally moves into first place, and ends up being the best platform for Cuphead. Now that we've reached the end of the game, we want to check the percentage of players that quit the game after making it through the first milestone, but failing to reach game completion. Here, all platforms are doing worse than the average industry result. Steam is performing the best out of the three, with Xbox struggling the most, but none of these results are especially good news for player retention for Cuphead. Finally, to get a feel for how the completion is treated this game, the rare milestone 5 chosen for Cuphead is called Beat the Devil at His Own Game. This milestone can be achieved if the player completes the game on expert difficulty. This means the bosses have more health, faster projectiles, and different attack combinations or mechanics. For Steam, we see that 2.9% of players actually accomplished this. On PlayStation, 3.4% did it, and Xbox had 1.3% that achieved this. Now let's see the full picture. Here are the raw milestones for Cuphead with the industry averages in gray for comparison purposes. Let's get into it. Some highlights for this view of the data are that even though the PlayStation version of Cuphead came out three years later than the others, it outperformed that in every milestone other than Milestone 4. The second and more significant trend to look at here is that the slopes for all three platforms are very consistent. That means there was no single quit moment, but that players were consistently stopping throughout playing Cuphead. The curves flattened slightly at the later milestones, but not significantly so. So this is our final tally for our milestones, but now let's see how the game stacks up against all other games in our database and find out if anyone truly played Cuphead. We use Milestone 4 as our ultimate ranking target. Here are the results for each platform for Milestone 4 once again. It's time to reveal the final rank Cuphead has in our database. Here we go. Steam and PlayStation are at rank 4, and Xbox is at rank 2. So a below average number of players actually played Cuphead on Steam and PlayStation, and not many people played Cuphead on Xbox. This isn't the strongest result for our industry rankings, but our database is able to give us other comparisons as well. Let's break it down. Here we can show the breakdown for Cuphead across class, genre, review score, and game length. Please keep in mind that because we are comparing data across smaller subsets, the statistical power of these rankings are weaker than our overall industry ranking. Starting off with class comparison, Cuphead is an indie game. So ranking it compared to all other indie contemporaries, we can see that the results are stronger. All platforms increase one rank each. This shows very clearly that gamers played Cuphead more than other indie titles. How about genre? We have classified Cuphead as a shoot-em-up. Compared to other games in that genre, we see that it shows as mixed because we see Steam rising to rank 7 and PlayStation to rank 5. Xbox, however, drops to rank 0. This is caused by a much smaller subset of games in this genre and is causing more data spread. This result implies there's actually very little change for Cuphead. Next is ranking based on reviews. The scores for Cuphead put it in the category with games that have scored in the 80s for Open Critic. Here the results are weaker for Cuphead as all platforms drop a rank. Lastly is ranking based on average game completion length. Cuphead is in the 11 to 25 hours range. Rankings compared to similar length games has a slight increase with Steam rising a rank compared to the industry. Overall, we can see that Cuphead was slightly stronger against indie titles and also games with similar length. All right, it's time to reveal the results for our game better or worse. So to recap, Cuphead is up against Dead Cells, Blasphemous 2, and Halo Infinite. Last chance to make your choices. Which ones are Cuphead ranked better than or worse than? And the results are that Cuphead player retention was better than Halo Infinite and better than Dead Cells, but worse than Blasphemous 2. What do you think about that? Now let's see if we can tease out some other observations by looking at these results in different ways. It's time for the deep dive. Let's start with progressive player loss. Each group shows how many total players have stopped playing the game at that particular milestone. Here we see the continuous drop off in players on all platforms. There is a strong drop on Xbox at the start and a good hold for PlayStation, but regardless of those, everything seems to come out pretty even in the end. 
Moving on, we can look at milestone player retention. This calculation only takes into account the player population loss as a percentage compared to the previous milestone. The story here is the consistently increasing percentage of player loss as we progress through the game. Here there really isn't much of a slowdown in the losses, so we can say that the Cuphead experience is pretty even and consistent as well. Nothing holds on to players strongly, but nothing also created a major quit moment as well. How about completionists? How did the rarest milestones perform on the different platforms? PlayStation was the strongest with Steam a close second. It is interesting that the platform that released three years later has the highest percentage here. Finally, we check on early versus late game retention. When you read a chart like this, the best performers are further away from the center of the circle. Early game PlayStation is showing strong out of the gate. End game loss is weaker overall, but Steam takes the top position here. Completionist loss shows PlayStation back on top with Xbox trailing slightly. Let's take one final look at all the platforms and their Milestone 4 results, but this time we show the full percent rank within our database. This is to give you a detailed view of how the rankings played out. Use this data as you will. Let's wrap this up. So what are our major takeaways from all the data? Overall, the results for Cuphead are a bit on the weak side compared to the strong reviews and player response to the game. Steam and PlayStation had below average player retention, and Xbox had fairly weak retention. For a unique indie like Cuphead, it might be the case of pulling in a lot of players because of the art style and anticipation, but then losing ground with those players over the course of the game. Player sentiment is very positive for Cuphead, so no one is unhappy with the game. But clearly a lot of players never make it through the game to see the various bosses or finish the story arc. It's also possible that players played an easier difficulty and didn't get counted for completing the game. We don't see any indication of this based on the data slopes or the player loss rates, but I feel like it should be mentioned. And when we look at Cuphead against other indies, we see that it does better, and that's a good result as sometimes it isn't always fair to compare indies with larger, more well-funded games. And on Xbox, we should look at the Game Pass effect as it has hurt so many games before. But while there might be some effect here, it's not significant. Xbox results are good and they trend well with the other platforms. That clearly indicates that Cuphead is strong enough to not have the Game Pass drop that we would normally see. Another positive result for Cuphead. And even more positive is that there is no quit moment for the game. We do not see the slope or players drop off at any singular point. We see a steady decline in players over the course of the game. The rate of loss is perhaps a bit too high as the end result is below average but it does indicate very good game design and balance that we don't see a large drop at any one point throughout the game, especially a game this challenging. Cuphead launched a universal acclaim for its art style, gameplay, music, and even difficulty. It sold well, and definitely has left a mark on the gaming landscape. Gamers came out to play this game, but didn't quite keep that same energy into finishing the game. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes just the experience of playing a game for a bit is enough to be satisfied and feel like you've gotten your money's worth. But on the other side of the coin is that Cuphead won many awards. It was even nominated for Game of the Year at the DICE Awards, and it actually won Best Indie Game at the Game Awards, and Best Xbox Game of the Year at the Golden Joystick Awards. All that acclaim is well earned, but it doesn't align too well with our results on how much players actually played this game. Cuphead is essentially a boss rush with amazing atmosphere and should be celebrated for bringing amazing visuals and music to the forefront. It would have been nice to have seen more gamers experience everything this game has to offer, but whether it is because of difficulty, interest level, or something else, that just wasn't in the cards. And that's a wrap. Hopefully you all found this data interesting, and we all learned a little bit more about our gaming world today, and Cuphead in particular. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to do all the YouTube support stuff. Grant us a like and a sub if you haven't already. I'd love to read any comments you have down below. What conclusions do you all take from this data? And of course, feel free to suggest the next game we should look at to determine if anyone played it. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.